Hey everyone, my name is Cirque and welcome back to another episode here on The Colonies, my single player Let's Play series. Just taking out our little villager transport here, because I, I think we've got enough here to uh, to start our village. All the old ones are gonna, gonna have to uh, just go away, we'll get rid of them later. But uh, yeah, today I want to get a lot of work done here in this place. What is this? Is this another beetroot? Stop planting beetroot. You jerks. <laughs> beetroot and wheat. I don't want them here. Get them out of here. I think I just saw another. Yep. More beetroot. I need to get those seeds out of their inventory. Yeah, I saw you plant that. Yeah, I, I see ya. I see you there. You're just gonna go back and forth now, aren't ya? I can do this all day. Do it. <laughs> do it, I dare ya. Get out of here with that beetroot. We want potatoes and carrots only. Alright, I think that's enough. <laughs> Someone else came in and, uh, planted some potatoes. Anyways, before we get started, I wanted to give a special shout out to our newest Patreon uh, over at patreon.com slash the uh, or patron, I should say, and his name is Dragon Tech. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, if any of you would like to support the channel, you can do so over at patreon.com slash the uh, But I also wanted to give a special shout out to Dragon Tech's uh, YouTube channel, which I think is just Dragon Tech. There will be a link down in the description. He's doing a single player Minecraft series right now called Building Nations, which is similar in, in this vein where you go around and build different uh, settlements. Uh, and it is pretty, pretty cool, pretty entertaining. Uh, right now, he's actually working on his own trading village, although it's not really a village. It's more of a giant fortified city, uh, and it's looking amazing. Um, he's also, I think he just finished up his uh, his spawn town kind of uh, um, tree farm area called Hatchet, which, first of all, I love that name. I wish I would have thought, ab thought about it or thought of it. Uh, that is a great name for a town, but... Um, also looks really cool. Yeah, go check him out. Uh, very good YouTuber. Smaller channel, but uh, he's I can see him growing uh, pretty well. Anyways, on with the village. So today the goal is to get this place done. I want this place 100% done so we can move on and also start trading. And to do that, we are going to want... I see... Uh, why are you guys trampling on this? I'm not sure why they are, actually. Uh, I did put trapdoors on top of these full blocks so that they wouldn't climb up on here and fall down. But it seems like they're still trampling it every once in a while. Anyways, to make this place 100% done, we are going to need a few things. We're going to need some lights uh, to, to make it nice and safe, make it spawn proof, keep the villagers safe and not zombified. We are going to need some more doors. I think right now we're at like 15 doors, which only supports uh, five villagers. It's three doors per villager. Uh, so we're going to need to hide away a bunch of doors. I want to get like 20 to 30 villagers in here. And we're also going to need to decorate this place up. And I have been I've been playing around with some stuff, uh, mainly these vines. I'm going with more of a kind of a naturalistic look on the village. I, I played around with like adding some different decorations, accents, putting like trap doors and, and fences and uh, wood on top of them to just do something and none of it was really turning out. So I think we're just going to kind of spam leaves and vines everywhere. <laughs> when in doubt, just put leaves on it. Uh, but I think that will that will really uh, match kind of the style that we're going with here anyways. Uh, although I guess I'm gonna have to get a bunch of string to sort of limit these. Um, maybe. I don't know if we'll get to that today because I don't actually have a lot of string. But anyways, that is our goal today. That's what we need to accomplish. Um, and to start out, we need to get some lights done. I do have, I have some glowstone that we can use. Not a whole lot. At the moment, I don't have any silk touch tools, which is kind of why I want to get this place up and running. So we can hopefully get a librarian with a silk touch book also mending would be great but i thought about doing something like this with the lights uh putting some glowstone around the openings i kind of want to keep those openings there but i think that might be cool and the hope is that it will light up the roof a little bit if we do that which it kind of does <laughs> uh it looks like yeah it looks like it only lights up to here 
once you get down here, that's light seven. So we'll have to include some more lights or just put leaves on top of these houses. Make sure that nothing can spawn on top of them. Uh, this is definitely not going to be enough glowstone though. And so I think the other main light source we can use is some jack-o'-lanterns. And I kind of mentioned last time that jack-o'-lanterns are uh, a bit of a pain to make now. They, they made them kind of annoying to craft because you can't just take a pumpkin and craft it with a torch anymore. That doesn't work uh, because you now have pumpkins and carved pumpkins. So you need to place it down. You need to carve it. Uh, pick it back up and then you can take it and craft it to make a jack-o'-lantern and so I Devised a redstone contraption. Uh, I need to find my redstone here though All right We are going to make a pumpkin carving machine and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna put a hopper and Behind the hopper we're gonna put a block and observer on the block then another block block up top block there uh, a sticky piston facing up with a block on top of it block beside it and then a regular piston facing towards the hopper and then we're going to have a repeater repeater and a redstone in this back corner and that is our pumpkin carving machine so this kind of works like a, uh, a concrete mixer uh, you want to have your let's see let's combine these you want to have your pumpkins in your offhand and your shears in your main hand and then you just right click and it will you'll place the pumpkins you'll shear them real quick and then the piston will break the pumpkins and they'll get picked up by the hoppers so let's do like half a stack here and there we go we got 31 I think I let go of the right click a little early so it uh, it didn't quite carve all of them and it might not carve every single one. Oh, and we're going to end up with so many dang pumpkin seeds. I don't know what to do with those. I wish you could uh, you could eat them. Like uh, cook them in a furnace or something and eat them. But yeah, that's, that's our pumpkin carving machine. Super simple. Uh, the way it works is, like the reason why we have this piston here, is uh, what happens, maybe you can see this when we click on here. Uh, this will actually, like push this block up and leave it there and then it'll pull it back down kind of in the same motion and uh, the reason it does that is this observer block gives off a super quick signal like a one tick signal and when you give a, a piston a one tick signal like a sticky piston it'll push up the block and then leave it there and the reason that's important is if we took this out we would end up with a clock so if we do that uh, the the piston firing actually like updates and causes the observer block to send out a signal just by doing that obviously not a good thing to have so that's why we put this in because uh, the first time the observer block sends out a signal it raises this block up and then the redstone can't go through so that means it doesn't trigger the piston again and it doesn't cause a loop uh, all it does is the second time it fires is it brings this block down uh, and it's ready for the next time that you place a pumpkin so it's basically just that I love it so we can uh, we can carve all our pumpkins super quickly with this right now it's sometimes it, it goes faster than others I don't know if it's it's weird I don't know there's like server lag on single player nowadays it's kind of strange I don't know what they did uh, <laughs> however many updates ago that that happened but uh, you do kind of experience that server lagginess uh, but anyways not all of them got carved but we do have some carved and then we can just uh, take these craft them with our torches and we have our jack-o'-lanterns takes out a few steps in the process at least and this place is a bit more safe. I've got some lights hidden in the ground underneath a bunch of leaves. Uh, so everything is pretty well lit up. There are some parts of the roofs that aren't. And there might be some areas in the path because I, I just uh, put some lights where there's grass. So maybe over by the fire pit there might be some, uh, some dark spots but I can fix those later. Uh, I did go and put glowstone inside all of the buildings. Uh, I had to go grab a little bit more, but uh, I was able to just put four in the top of each one. And some of the bigger buildings, I think this one's fine in here. Yeah, we got block level eight. 
Uh, some of the bigger buildings, I will need to put some other lights uh, down below, like this one here. Uh, the lights are a little bit higher and we got a little bit bigger room. So I'll have to put some lights in here, but that is fine. I can do that with the decorations inside. Um, I did hide some lights here with the uh, with the magma blocks. I put a jack-o'-lantern underneath uh, to keep that lit up because otherwise it only emits a like light level 3. So right now it's emitting light level 14, I think. Uh, and that kind of goes with the fire. A little bit of a smoldering effect. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, I did, I only put it underneath there so that the villagers wouldn't stand on it and get hurt. <laughs> uh, baby villagers still could go in there, but uh, I figured that's a pretty small chance and uh, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. I've also been spreading a bunch of vines and it's looking all right. I have, uh, I, I really hate trying to control vines and I, I really don't want to stick string everywhere so that is a bit of a bummer. Maybe I'll put buttons on places where I, I don't want the vines to spread. Also, I've seen in quite a few villagers like climbing up onto the houses. Uh, luckily, I, they can't really get hurt from falling that high. I mean, I guess there they could. But I haven't heard any villagers really taking damage as they uh, get down. I think there's, I think they're still bugged, honestly. Because at night, they tend to, like, they tend to not find doors, it, it seems like. They, they sort of gather outside of houses for some reason, uh, rather than going through the door. Maybe it has to do with this not being a square house. I don't, I don't really know how it, I guess I don't really know how it figures out. Because it should be, at night, they have to go through the door. And this, they should figure... They should figure out that this is the inside of the door uh, because there's more blocks blocking the sunlight on this side than there is on this side. But I don't know. They're they're kind of stupid. I mean, villagers have always been stupid, and I'm sure many of them will die to stupid reasons. But we'll deal with that in the future. Anyways, what I want to do now is stick some doors underground. We need more doors here. I'm thinking... If we want like 25 villagers, we're going to need uh, 75 doors. I have like 20 doors here at the moment. So we'll need another, you know, around 50, 60 doors. And the way I'm going to do this is, like I said, I'm going to hide them underground. I'm trying to think uh, if I want to stick these inside of a building, I could put like one here. And then we might have some villagers kind of gathering around inside of here. Or do I want them gathering out here? I think that would be better, honestly. So maybe what we'll do is like right here, we'll put one. So we're gonna dig down a few blocks. And I guess with the, we got some concrete powder, so we don't want that falling. So I'll dig down a little bit more. And then I'm gonna dig five blocks in each direction. So that's three, four, five. We'll dig that way, one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Get that all dug out, and then one, two, three, four, and five. And then what we're going to do is stick some doors down here. Uh, the way doors work is they, uh, they are valid if there's um, sunlight, more sunlight, within five blocks on one side of the door than there is on the other. So this is going to be the sunlight for all of the doors. We're going to keep this open. Uh, I'm going to put a trap door up here covering this. And that should count because trap doors allow 15 sky through there. It, it allows the skylight to come in. So that should count just like, uh, just like glass. And since it has to be within five blocks, that means one, two, three, four, five, and then we can have a door right here. So that's the farthest we can get with that one sky block. So I'll just place all these doors like this. And uh, like this, whoops, missed one. And then we'll break this and put a light here, just so we have another little light source, keeping all of this nice and lit. I don't know if it really matters. I don't think any mobs can spawn down here. But just in case, 
and break all those dirt blocks, which I'll have to lower myself one. Put that back, and then the trap door. And that should count. Those should count as valid doors. That is 20 doors right there. And uh, this should add some doors to the village. So I'm going to go around and probably put one maybe right here. And then I'll put one over towards that side of the village. All right. I have gathered up some sugar cane. I think this is like my fifth or sixth inventory full of sugar cane. Uh, trying to stock this place up because this place is like good to go. It, it's, <laughs> I think I'm done with it. Uh, it's amazing. It, it feels so good. And I think it has uh, turned out really well. I'm going to go drop this off real quick. Actually, let's, let's craft it. Why don't we craft it into some paper and we can get... Oh, I need to craft it on my own the first time because... Every time the version's updated, like, resets the recipes that I know. Alright, there we go. We'll do that. Can I... I can trade with paper with you. Maybe we'll trade with some paper with you. Oh, this is... This is actually the first time I've traded here in the village. Yeah, you take that paper. And I guess we'll start back over this way. I, I did see one... There was a nice librarian somewhere around here. But let's start back over on this end. I think the only thing left to do is clean up these chests, uh, but they're such a mess. I need to, uh, yeah, I need to just bring those back. I don't really have the storage p space here, and I don't really want to store this stuff here anyways. But I've gone around, and I've got the doors in place. we got plenty of doors here. Went around and planted, planted some grass, played around with the vines. I did stop some of them from growing with buttons on here. Which I think adds a little bit of like detail, or not really detail, just some sort of weird decoration thing on the outside of the the huts. Maybe adds a little bit of texture. Added a bunch of leaves for bushes. Uh, nothing too fancy, but just kind of made this place really look overgrown and messy. And uh, I think it turned out really well. Now, <laughs> I, I did. I tried to stop a lot of the vines from growing down to the bottom, like with the buttons here, so that the villagers wouldn't climb up by just running into the the hut. But as you can see, they can still climb up because of the bushes. The bushes sort of negated all of that work. Uh, so whatever, I'm just gonna let them climb around. They can have free reign around here. But uh, I added a few barrels outside. I figured this is, you know, it's a trading village. Their, their main thing is trading goods with people, uh, mainly me. <laughs> and so they're going to have some things just lying around, things, some goods lying around. Uh, over here, this is just a little water barrel because the river is way over there. So obviously they're going to want some water close by to use, but... I figured these are, I don't know, like barrels of spices or something. Um, Could be anything. We got a couple of crates. I sort of, I tried to stack some things like kind of by the farms or by like the main building. We do have a couple of barrels here and a chest. And then, oh, I was also using some of the, the dried or the kelp blocks. I think look really good as like uh, something. I guess one thing I was thinking is... You know, I'm trading them tons of paper, so maybe these are like stacks of paper, or maybe it's stacks of sugar cane or something that will be made into paper. Something of that sort is uh, is kind of my thoughts. And inside all of these huts, we do have stuff. <laughs> it's not really much for decoration. It's basically just a bed and a bunch of uh, crates and chests is what we went with. Uh, very sloppy, kind of lazy <laughs> interior decorating, but there's at least stuff here, and I think that makes it a little bit more immersive around here. Um, this one is a little bit different. I've had this set up our, for a while, but we have uh, a bunch of hay bales, and then I put some chests in here that I can store uh, wheat, potatoes, carrots that I want to trade away. And then some of the bigger houses, I did add some like second floors because there's space for it. So we have a little floor up here with a couple of beds and then a little spot up here for some storage. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. We got a cauldron in this one because it's kind of a bigger one. 
I think it uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, just lots of boxes around, basically, making it look really cluttered, like they have lots of stuff stored away, basically. Uh, and then we can continue over here. We got a few more barrels and crates uh, in this area. Another water barrel. Um, some more bushes. Lots of stuff around in here. You know, we got the big building. This is kind of my main storage room, so I have lots of sugar cane already uh, from harvesting the entire field, basically. Let's put this sugar cane away. And then lots of crates. We got a bed up there in the loft. A little storage area up there. Storage area up there. And I think, yeah, this one's got a bed as well. Uh, this also houses my ender chest, and we have an anvil in here. In case I want to add some books to something. Uh, we do have a dock over this way. And we have two docks. There's one down on that side and then one here. Uh, and I put some of these stacks here. Kind of like uh, they're, you know, they do a lot of trading on the river. The The water is updating very strangely in this update. Or it's, it's not updating correctly. So there's tons of holes in my river here. And I'm not sure. Actually, did this boat just fix it? Let me see. No, the boat didn't fix it. I thought maybe it did. Uh, yeah, water is not updating correctly. The, it's all source blocks underneath. And, I mean, even if it wasn't, it wouldn't behave like this. It wouldn't have weird empty pockets uh, without water flowing. It, it, I don't know what's going on. Anyways, we got some, some more stacks of kind of like the sugarcane, papery type stuff over here but I figured that's kind of a little like trading spot slash fishing spot uh, we got another big house here bed up there lots of boxes and crates um, and then a few more uh, crates and barrels and uh, the the stacks of paper I guess is what I'll call them as well as out here uh, I might do something over here. This looks like a this looks a little odd, just it butting up with the ground here. I might do something with that, but other than that, I'm I'm pretty happy with how this place turned out. I think it works out really well. Let's go find a librarian. Yeah, these guys they just they hop all around. <laughs> They're everywhere. I did also I replaced the bottom fence with either stairs or slabs because I was having a lot of villagers ending up outside. In fact, there's one there. I think right now the problem is uh, the babies are actually getting outside uh, through like this little spot. Before it was um, if the villagers are like up against the fence and then the chunks unload and reload, they end up on the other side of the fence is the problem. And I think right now we're having a similar problem with the babies, or maybe they can just fit through the gap. So I think I'm going to have to do some more stuff to sort of fortify this wall, <laughs> which is really annoying. It's it, kind of a pain in the butt to get keep these things in here. Anyways, back to what we were doing. Where is librarian? You're not it. You're the old librarian we brought over. Oh, here's a pretty good one. Channeling. Is that... That's the one that makes you fly, doesn't it? That sounds really awesome. <laughs> uh, let's trade some paper with you and see what other enchants you will open. Or what other uh, books you have. So that does that. Let's see. Got to remember how to do this. Now we want to buy a bookshelf. And then he'll unlock some more trades. And then we'll buy some glass and he'll unlock. Should unlock the first book trade. There we go. Punch one. Uh, I have to buy something else. Maybe we'll trade out the paper. See if it'll reset. All right. I'm going to reset. No, don't run away. They also, again, they are really stupid. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with their coding, but they're incredibly dumb. They're trying to get inside, it looks like, but they, they're not using the door. I don't know why they're not using the door. Now he is. But they tend to gather in like corners like this instead of actually going inside. And if I do that, usually that will sort of help them move. But yeah, they just, they're trying to like path their way inside, but they can't figure out doors for some reason. 
All right, I'm gonna have to buy something else for you to unlock Which I don't really have enough emeralds to do that. I think there was another librarian around here. Oh my gosh Right here. Oh, this is his second uh, his second book or his first book trade his second trade is mending Oh, that is what that's what we've been waiting for right there <laughs> Now we just need some silk touch and we'll be set. We'll be able to make some really good tools here uh, right off the bat. Anything else? We got glass and what's your second book trade going to be? We have channeling. Okay, another channeling one. That's not bad. Oh, it feels so good to be trading again. I think one of you is the one that I want. Yes, right there. All right, let us buy some books here. We're going to buy as many as I can, which is looks like it's that many. So we got six whole mending books now. Oh, I'm so happy about that. In fact, in fact, I have some levels. You know what? <sighs> you dang nitwits. You're not helping out in the village. You're, you're going to meet the wrath of my trident. Uh, I am really excited to try out that channeling, although I don't really want to put it on this trident because this one has the uh, the one that comes back. What is that? Loyalty. Um, so I, we really need to find another trident, and then we can get some channeling on that. We can try the the flying around with the trident. That sounds really cool. But anyways, uh, let's see. Let's put... Actually, this thing is kind of getting hurt. And I do, can't really repair it, so let's put some mending on that. And then let's put some mending on my pickaxe. That's good. And some mending on my axe. That thing is always breaking. And why not some mending on my shovel, of course. And how about on this fortune pickaxe? Then I never... Whoops, that's our comment of the day. Then I never have to repair that thing again. Uh, when I fortune things, that will repair itself. And I suppose on this sword, actually, uh, my boots, yes. We need it on my boots. So I need another mending book to put on my sword. This one's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good sword. So I'll have to try and save that one. But there we go. That, I got that. I got those boots in the nick of time because I'm usually not very good at repairing my armor. Anyways, let us end off the episode with our comment today. And we actually have two of them. The first one is... Uh, hey, Cirque, I was feeling down last week, but I stumbled on this series and loved it. I binge-watched the whole thing, and I was wondering how long you are willing to keep it going. And that's from D-Clan Dorsey. And thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that you love the series. I'm having so much fun on here. And I'm, I'm starting to get really kind of motivated again. I'm starting to see these projects come together. Um, I think one thing that's helping me is uh, we're nearing episode 25. I think this is episode 22 right now, and I think we're going to do a world tour and uh, world download on episode 25. Uh, every 25 episodes we'll do that. So I'm I'm trying to like get some of these projects done and going uh, before then. Uh, hopefully we can go back to the farming village and get quite a bit done uh, by by episode 25, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. And as for how long we're going to keep it going, we're going to keep it going for as long as I can. Uh, this is kind of... Uh, this, I want this world to be the last world that I create. Uh, we did uh, we did just you know start on this series, but it's basically the second season of this world. We, we have built... Uh, we did the whole circus series on this world as well back at Spawn. So... Uh, I haven't gotten rid of the world, and I, I definitely want to keep going with the world um, and keep going with the colonies for a while. Uh, we might have a season two eventually to kind of switch things up. I don't know what we would do or when that would be, but right now we're just we're chugging along, and I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, anyways, my second comment is from Mr. Dragon Tech, our new patron. And it says, love the village design, dude, and trust you to put a lighthouse on land. Also, great drinking game. Take a drink every time Cirque says hut. I don't know if I've said hut this uh, episode until right now. I can't remember if I was referring to these things as huts. Maybe I was saying hut 
over and over and over again. But yeah, I basically did make a, a lighthouse on land. <laughs> I was kind of thinking about that when I was making these is, you know, they're kind of watchtowers is what they're supposed to be for, for the villagers to look out over the, the swamp or at the river, I guess, maybe across the river on the other side. But the main purpose was so that when I'm down there in the marsh, I can find the gate. So it, it basically is a lighthouse because it's just a guide for when I'm out in the sea of sugarcane out there. But, uh, yep, that's what I do. I make lighthouses. <laughs> that's me. We do need to make a, a proper lighthouse sometime soon. Oh, if I had that channeling, I could I could use it right now. That'd be pretty awesome. Oh, that is going to do it for today. I hope you have enjoyed another episode on the colonies. I hope you uh, really like how the village turned out. I'm super happy with it. And it's so good, like I said, to be back trading. I actually have emeralds again. We're trading paper. Uh, we have a few farmers, which I haven't had in forever. Uh, we had like one farmer over in the old village and that one died somehow. And since we couldn't breed any new villagers, we, uh, we haven't gotten any new farmers. So it's nice to finally get some farmers we can trade with. Those are the best ones for getting emeralds a lot easier than any other, uh, profession. And, uh, now we can get some, get some of these books, these enchanted books a little bit easier Hopefully we can unlock a, uh, a Silk Touch trade and get that on one of our picks. But we'll see you next time, and goodbye, folks.